Today I'm going to show you how to persist your JSON um, array or object um, into the storage or into the session um, of your users so that when, for example, right in here, the user types in their name and their email and they have it, if they reload the page, they continue the progress. And this normally doesn't work if you are working with JSON files in a variable. They just get wiped out, um, even with persistent storage. So what we're going to do in today's video, we're going to dive really deep into how to stringify, so turn your JSON file into raw text, and then save this raw text as a backup, and on page load, turn this raw text back into the JSON and set this as the initial state of your JSON variable, which will be a second one, that will render the list so that when you reload it, the list is already pre-rendered based on information that was in the user's browser and not from an API call. Um, yeah, so this is quite a simple thing. I made a whole video on this clonable, how to delete things, how to um, add things. So I would highly recommend to look into that before you watch it. more of this video because this may just confuse you a bit because you don't have the basics of it. So I would highly recommend that. Uh, yeah, but for now, let's just go really quick through the general setup. So we have the render list action and we use the vIterator. Then we have on event, as in the previous template, we are um, defining the object and we're pushing it into the um, v.myArray, right, using the push operator. But what we're doing now, and this is new, we're going to have the stored array. This is a second variable which we created. This is that contains the backup data. And we have this equal json.stringify and then v.myArray. So we are taking the v.myArray, this one, and we are turning it into a string, into text, and we're saving this text into this backup variable. That's it. That is all the magic. And then we do the same thing for the delete item. So once we deleted the item out of the original variable, the v underscore, uh, uh, the v dot my underscore array, we are taking this new version, which has one record less, and we are setting this first of all as string as array equals JSON dot stringify, and then we define this on the array. So it's the same process. The only thing we're doing here is we're just defining something first before we're pushing it in, in the string, because I had some issues when I pushed in the string, it just gave me a number. So that's the way I went around that is we just define um, a string array as the stringified version of the latest, like it's the same process. So we take this my underscore array and turn it into a string. But now this time it includes already the deleted one. We just deleted something from it. Now we're turning this after we deleted something into a string. So this string will contain one record less than the string we already have, if we already have one. And then we're going to set the existing string by this new version of the string that now is the same as the my array, right? So. We deleted one thing from the my array. Now we want to update the v.stored array as well because we don't want to have three records in my array and four records in stored array. So we are taking the three records that are now in my array, turning them into a string and pushing them and updating the v.stored array to only show three records now instead of four. So it is very simple. Perfect. And now we're just defining the placeholder and all of that. We had that in the other video, but we're just setting visibility of the placeholder that when nothing is in here, we just have this little nice uh, element. And then we have the set array by storage. This is where the interesting things happen right here. Um, we just have this condition that when the page starts loading and we don't have an empty string in the stored array, what we could also do is we could also rewrite this and use dot length 
and we could use an operator. So if we would test now for dot length, we would get two because uh, this is like an array, but as a string. So it will count like the open and the close. So we have two. What we could do, we could do something like uh, is greater than two. And then it would be false and it will not set that if we were to reload that. Um, because we just want to, what we're going to do here is we are going to take the v dot array and let it equal whatever is in this in here um, as the JSON version. So what we're taking is we're taking the string that is in this variable right now and even though this looks like this looks the same, this looks like this. This is JSON, this is text. That those are two separate things that look the same way, and this is what will cause maybe some issues for do you down the road if you're working with it. So I would highly suggest um let's just really quick explain this and then I'm going to do my tip here. And um, so what we're going to do is we have this array equal um the JSON. So we're taking this array, this text, turning it to a JSON, and we have the new array. So the, the my array, this is the array that renders the list, equal the JSON version generated from the text stored into the stored array that will be our backup because only this array will be able to store it. Um, let me just give you an example. If we were to turn this condition to one, plus one equals equals three, which is wrong, right? False. But we will not have that set, right? So if we were to add information in here, okay, let's add that. Perfect. We will actually, why is that adding it? <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. Um, Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we do nine? It should be false. So it shouldn't run this function. Maybe I need to refresh the canvas. Let's look into that. Okay. Ah. What's going on here? Actually, we don't even need that thing. Then, I assume. Because if we... I could just... Oh, okay, now we're talking. Okay, okay. Now I already thought I'm insane. Um, okay, <laughs> it probably was some sort of a timeout, <laughs> or it was some sort of a server issue. Maybe I had bad internet connection and it didn't propagate. But now, if we reload the page, we will see that um, if we don't have this function set, right? If we don't trigger it, we will have something in this variable, but we will not set it as the v dot my array right? Because um, it is not getting triggered. So what we want to look out for is you want to look out for that there is actually something in here. So if we look at this and we're using the operator for dot length, we will know that we will have now 62. Um, so if we want to do, if we want to use dot length for this, we can use dot length is greater than two because we will just have the array in there as a string, which will count as two characters. So if it is greater than two, that means we have something in there, right? And this is when we want to run this function that will take the data, as you could see from here, and parse it into a JSON, from string to JSON, and then push it into the v.my array. And yeah, then render the list and do all of that. So, yeah, this is it. Apparently, as it looks like, if you're working with parsing JSONs and all of that, uh, don't get scared right away if something doesn't work. You may just have to refresh the canvas, <laughs> as I had to. So, I hope that this helps you. And, yeah, I hope that you built a lot of exciting stuff with that. Don't save too many data on your user's devices. Um, you may want to be careful with that. But if you need to, uh, now you know how to do that. So, thank you so much for watching. And, yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.